Before we dig into this video, let's go over a quick recap of what a smart contract is. Smart contracts are simply agreements written in code that are usually ran on a blockchain. Now you might be wondering, why a blockchain? Well, what happens on a blockchain cannot be changed. So when you and someone else come up with a financial agreement, to change that agreement, you would have to change millions of computers all around the world. It's no longer just your word versus someone else's word, or an agreement written on paper. It's an agreement shared with millions of other people who have a copy of it. Moving on, smart contracts can be as simple as, if I pay you $10 today, you'll pay me back $1 every day for the next 10 days. They can then get more complicated, like if I give you $10 of Ethereum, you'll give me $10 of Doggy Coins, where basically the code can actually check if both people truly have $10 of each token that they want to trade, and then automate the trading, so if one person doesn't give all $10, or they change their mind, the other person won't be left robbed. Finally, financial smart contracts can be as complicated as, if you give me $10 of USDC, I'll give you $8 of Ethereum, but you have to pay me 6% yearly interest. Now, just like addition eventually becomes the building blocks for multiplication and even exponents, these simple smart contracts can easily and quickly become the backbone of an entire nation's financial system. But there is one problem. These smart contracts can only look at data on the blockchain. They can only look at your past transactions, your current account balance, or what your friend has done on the blockchain in the past. Inherently, this limits them. But what if we could bond real life data into a smart contract? That way we could create something like a sports betting app, where we could bet on who is going to win a game, or how many points a team may win by. Let's use a real life example where quarterback Patrick Mahomes throws a 50 yard touchdown to win an NFL game. A sports betting app may use smart contracts to take up bets before the game. And then at the end of the game, in the traditional world at least, a bookmaker would need to obtain the information about the game from a sports website to pay out the winners. However, in the new world of blockchain technology, we don't want to rely on a single person inputting that data. We don't want to put our money in the hands of a single, error-prone, emotional-by-nature human. What if the sports betting blockchain app had a way to gather real-world data, put it on the blockchain, and in a way that we don't have to rely on a single person to hopefully give the blockchain truthful data? Welcome to Whiteboard Crypto, the number one YouTube channel for crypto education, and here we explain topics of the cryptocurrency world using analogies, stories, and examples so that even your grandpa could understand them. In this video, we are going to explain what Chainlink is, how it works, the problem that it solves, as well as its tokenomics. Actually, I've never done this before, but if you stick around to the end of this video, I'm going to show you how you can check out our pretty big research guide that we've put together on Chainlink, including some price predictions. Chainlink aims to create a network where data providers, which are also called oracles, are incentivized by money to provide truthful and reliable data to a blockchain. Chainlink is ran by oracles, so it's really important that you know what an oracle is. Basically, an oracle is a software that acts as an intermediary, helping to do a two-way data transfer between smart contracts and the real world. We actually have an entire video on what oracles are, so we won't focus too much on how they actually work, but in this video we'll focus specifically on how Chainlink uses them. Moving on, what is Chainlink? Well, Chainlink is a decentralized network of oracles that provide data from off-chain sources to on-chain sources and vice versa. It allows smart contracts to access real-world information that exists outside of the blockchain in a secure manner. Now, Chainlink also tackles the reliability problems associated with using a centralized data source, but we'll get to that in a little bit. Launched in June of 2017, Chainlink is the brainchild of SmartContract.com, a company co-founded by Sergey Nazarov and Steve. Steve Ellis. Although their innovation arrived when the crypto industry was actually booming with new projects, Chainlink has continuously delivered on its promises, coupled with plans to expand beyond just the Ethereum network. The Chainlink network acts as a bridge between the new and booming blockchain industry and the traditional administrative structures that drive economies to build more efficient, secure, and transparent processes. Now that was a little bit of jargon, but we'll get into it in a minute. It should be noted that Chainlink is an Ethereum-based network and is secured by a proof-of-stake consistency census algorithm. Oh, and by the way, Chainlink is a blockchain that was built to actually solve a problem, to put off-chain data like temperatures and stock prices, or how many views this video has, and then to allow blockchain smart contracts to read that data. The important thing here is that this is good news for investors, since many crypto tokens are unfortunately solutions looking for problems to solve. Moving on, how does Chainlink work? 
Now, this is a great question. Why? Because if you Google it, you'll find pages of really technical stuff that most people won't understand. And if you go to YouTube and try to find a video that explains it, well, none of the videos on Chainlink actually explain how it worked. They explain the tokenomics, or what problem Chainlink is solving, or why you should invest in it. Just nothing truly explaining how it actually works so that you can understand it. Well, grab a chair because I'm about to attempt to do so. Now the first thing you must understand with Chainlink is that it is technically replacing a bunch of middlemen. Think about a real estate agent. Nowadays, a lot of people just go to a website like Zillow, find the house that they want, and then move forward with that process opposed to hiring an agent to show them eight different houses. The same is true with a travel agent. They are a middleman. Even more so, let's refer back to our sports betting example. Someone is collecting money on both sides of the bet and also being a referee to decide who gets the winnings. Well, Chainlink's oracles and the use of smart contracts will replace all of these people with code. Now the way they do that is very complicated, but here's how it works. First off, how does data get onto the Chainlink network? The answer is node operators. And this is a fancy word for someone who locks up some of their money and says, I want to be a trusted source of data, ask me any question. Now you might be wondering, why do they have to lock up their money? Well, if we can prove that they are no longer being truthful, we can actually take that money from them. This incentivizes them to always tell the truth. However, the next question you might have is why would they take this risk in the first place? Here's a hint, it's to earn money. People pay these node operators to give them reliable and truthful outside real world data. It's a win-win situation. In reality, it gets a little more technical than that. When someone wants a piece of data on the blockchain, like maybe the weather, they first have to set up something called a requesting contract, which is the start of it all. We're about to get into some really technical stuff, so if you grabbed that chair earlier, you better sit down in it. After setting up a requesting contract, the Chainlink algorithm will register this request as an event, after which it will set up a new matching smart contract known as a Chainlink service level agreement contract, which will allow it to access data off the blockchain. Afterwards, the service level agreement contract will create three more subcontracts, a reputation contract, an order matching contract, and an aggregating contract. We're going to go through these next. First, Chainlink's reputation contract evaluates the track record of an oracle to determine its performance history and authenticity, and then will basically remove a bunch of unreliable or inaccurate nodes. To put it in a way that's easier to understand, this contract basically checks to make sure that wherever we're getting the data from can be trusted. The second contract is the order matching contract, which sends the request contract's query or question to trustable nodes and then checks their bids. From the list that it gets, it then chooses the suitable amount and types of nodes to handle the question. It should be said somewhere in here, Chainlink converts the request contracts question into another programming language, and then it can actually go into the real world and grab data from the internet. Finally, Chainlink's aggregating contract can validate data from both single and multiple sources. Using the previous NFL match as an example, let's assume eight different nodes send one set of similar scores of the game, and then another three nodes transmit a different game score. Well, the aggregating contract will basically look at all these answers and then get rid of the ones that don't really make sense, or in this case, the three that transmitted a different game score. The aggregating contract can repeat the validation process for many different sources, after which it reconciles them by taking an average. Now it is worth noting that some answers to questions cannot be an average, but that's outside the scope of this video. With all of these processes combined, Chainlink seamlessly and reliably provides accurate data for smart contract execution. To sum it up in a whiteboard crypto manner, basically all of these contracts work together to follow this simple formula. You pay Chainlink to go find some trustable nodes which is the reputation contract. Then, you give them a question that hopefully they can find the answer to, and this is the order matching contract. Finally, you let Chainlink aggregate all the data into a single answer, which is the aggregating contract. This is a good overview of how Chainlink actually works. Did I explain it well? Hopefully, but let's move on to Chainlink's tokenomics. First off, before I get into Chainlink's tokenomics, I want to share with you a project that I've been working on. Basically, there are millions of people out there wanting a Chainlink price prediction. And then to help them make an educated guess, I've actually created a Chainlink price prediction web page that hopefully will show up on the first page of Google. Now I must say, personally, I do not like price predictions because they're usually inaccurate, they can become self-fulfilling prophecies, and they can harm a person's reputation if they're wrong. So here at Whiteboard Crypto, we have created a page for people that want price 
price predictions, but filled the page with a bunch of research before the very conservative price predictions. That way it's not complete clickbait. The idea here is to spoon feed anyone who wants a price prediction with enough truthful and accurate information that they themselves can accurately make an educated guess as to where the price of an asset may be going. Anyways, if you'd like to see that huge research page we put together on Chainlink, you can help us rank in Google by searching Chainlink Price Prediction and then finding whiteboardcrypto.com's page to view it. I do want to say that this page has a ton of information that we had to dig for to put together, and I think you're going to love it. Anyways, there's way too much stuff on that page to put into a video, and it contains a lot of time-sensitive stuff, so let's get back to the basic tokenomics of Chainlink. The Chainlink blockchain has a native token called Link. And this token is used to fund the project's growth. During Link's ICO in September of 2017, the developers stated that there would be a maximum supply of 1 billion tokens. At launch, when they sold some of these tokens, Chainlink's price was 11 cents. But today it trades between $20 and $30, representing a 20,000% increase from the launch price. At the time of making this video, Link has a circulating supply of over 464 million tokens, which is around 46% of the total supply. It's also worth mentioning that since the Link token supply is limited, it could be considered non-inflationary since an increase in demand will most likely make the price increase also. Chainlink's white paper reveals that 35% of Link's total supply will be allocated to people who help secure Chainlink's network and actually run the oracles. Then, another 30% will be channeled towards the development of the Chainlink blockchain and the ecosystem, and the remaining 35% were sold in public sales events, like the ICO. Since Chainlink is a decentralized network, users can leverage it to become node operators themselves and earn Link tokens by handling important data-related tasks that ultimately lead to the blockchain's success. Now, in short, and this is important, the two main uses of Link tokens are to pay the network, including the oracles, to give you some data, and also to be used as deposit by node operators to ensure that they play nice and stay honest. Ending this video, if you haven't heard of our free DeFi for Beginners guide, you should go to whiteboardcrypto.com where you can immediately enroll in it, join our newsletter, and find a few other custom tools that we've created. And if you really want to dive into the rabbit hole of DeFi, you can join Whiteboard Crypto Club where you'll gain access to a private community, get a sign-up bonus of $20 of Ethereum to jumpstart your journey, be able to watch some premium tutorials that I put together, and be supporting the channel in our future team's work. No hard sell though, the opportunity will be waiting when you're ready to learn. Anyways, Thank you guys for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I really hope that you've learned something. And most of all, I hope to see you in our next video.